What's up, Internet? Sorry if this is boring. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, guys. Welcome to Fandemonium. I'm here with the Daniels, the creators of the film Swiss Army Man, which, if you haven't seen, is probably one of the most funny, original, and completely bananas film you'll see. came out earlier this year, and now it's out on Blu-ray and VOD, so I figured we could do a little bit of a deep dive. One of the things I think is really interesting about this film is that you took it to the Sundance Labs and you had the chance to meet Quentin Tarantino, who is like, he has my heart and mm -hmm. my yeah. soul. Oh, yeah. um, what were some things that he told you that maybe changed the shape of how you developed the film? Uh, he told us to put the Gilligan's Island theme song in there. He said, normally I'm able to sit down and finish a script in one sitting. This is the first script I've ever read where I had to put it down halfway and go do something else. I and think then, he put it down a couple times. Yeah, exactly. He was like, this is the hardest script to read <laughs> I've read in a long time, or maybe ever, I can't remember. Which was, we were like, okay, that's not a compliment. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's a good thing. No. Uh, it was, it, yeah, our, our, our script at the time was a lot more complicated, and so we ended up just cutting a bunch of stuff out, but it was... He uh, had, like, wonderful, like, kind of unexpected feedback, and because we're super fans, too, we took, mm -hmm. we, like, hung on his every word. Um, oh, yeah. And uh, like the most helpful thing he said was he said that like a good kung fu movie has like three or four fight scenes, and mm. that bad kung fu movies have like nine or ten. And the directors think it's a better kung fu movie because they're like, oh, people want more fights. Yeah. Uh, but it's like you know it's exhausting, and they just start to get redundant. And he said that our script, as it stood, had too many. Well, so that makes yeah. sense to me because he's such a fan of he's such a cinephile. Yeah. yeah. So he's watched so many films, and you watch his movies, and you're like, oh yeah, I could see who he's influenced by. But it always feels very uniquely him. Right. We yeah. could just talk about Quentin Tarantino. I know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, know. I won't. This is such an original story, and it's such an original idea. Even though it's very simple when you kind of break it down, how on earth did you come up with it? Like, what was the brainchild? How did it begin? It's funny. Well, it was we, so not it's simple the to come up with. To answer. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't seem simple to come up with. No, yeah. yeah. It, it was really, it started out as like a really bad joke. Yeah. I think all of our ideas started off like the worst joke ever that we're both too ashamed to tell anyone else. And um, then it became then, like, it was kind of yeah. like an inside joke where I would constantly bring it up and be like, hey, Dan, remember that idea you had of the guy riding the farting corpse while beautiful music plays and he cries? <laughs> yeah. uh, we should really make that. And he would always be like, no, no. like, like yeah. too scared to pitch it as a music video. Like, it was, it was just kind of like a recurring, like... Uh, it was like career suicide. Um, but, yeah. but I think because of that, it just kept sticking around. And like years after we, I initially pitched it, um, we were like thinking about it again. We're like, huh, what would happen after that, that scene? The scene where he, he shoots off on a jet ski dead body. Like, what, what happens next? Um, and that kind of just opened up a lot of really fun uh, questions. And yeah, and that, that, that night we kind of cracked this idea of like yeah. an amnesiac corpse needing to learn about life and love and being taught it out in the woods. Yeah. And that like really stuck with us as like, oh, what a fun, like, like a uh, weird way to do the kind of Charlie Kaufman thing that we love so much without making a movie about movies. So yeah. it ended up being, being the most personal thing either of us had ever worked on. Yeah. Um, and that was like, a really like like I, like I said, it was a really complicated thing to boil down and find the simple story in there because yeah. it was yeah. just a mess for like, a while. Like, what is the arc with a farting jet ski corpse? Right. Yeah. Where, right. Where's the story arc? It was sort of like we did it. Career yeah. suicide, the movie, where we were yeah. like, what if we take the idea we shouldn't do for our first feature, and then pour our hearts into it? And it was like a piece of performance art where like. Like because it started from such a scary place, it right. like forced us to make it as beautiful as possible and as sincere as possible because like any misstep, like it would be a train wreck. It could have easily sucked. I mean, yeah. it's yeah. one of those things where it's so out there as an idea. What's interesting to me about Swiss Army Man is that you do have this, like I said earlier, bananas kind of premise. But really, it's about such human things. It's about yeah. friendship, and it's about you know feeling less alone in the world and discovering the world. In a way, it's a coming of age story for Manny. Totally. Um, so, how did you guys find the way through all of the bananas, crazy ideas to get to this emotional place that feels really authentic? Yeah, I mean, it was, that dichotomy is kind of what attracted us to the the, the project once mm -hmm. we discovered it. Was that like by collecting a bunch of crazy kind of uh, sophomoric ingredients uh, and then trying to make them as palatable and sincere and human and relatable and entertaining as possible, it gave us permission to like, like indulge our like romantic cheesy selves. Yeah. And we were like, oh cool, like we don't have to worry that this is gonna come off saccharine because it started, because it's a corpse. You know, like now we can make the most like sincere love story 
it's like true. you can muster, mm -hmm. uh, and and it'll still land somewhere in the middle. Yeah, some people on Twitter are saying it's the best love story of 2016, which you know, I don't I don't want to disagree with. I think that's pretty pretty great. <laughs> yeah, um. I mean, you know, one of, one of the because I've read a lot of reviews and stuff, and one of the things I loved, I think it was you said you called it an existential fart drama. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Which one I of think us said that. Yeah. One of, one of you yeah. said it. It's so great, but you know. Of course, bodily functions and the sort of basic, most primal elements of what it is to be human and to die and have that process happen is a huge part of the story. Mm -hmm. uh, I need to know more about like the farts. And <laughs> did you guys like research what happens to a body when it decomposes and how often? Like, is it scientifically accurate? Do do human corpses fart that much? Because it's yeah. terrifying. It's to me. pretty awful. We we Google image search dead bodies, we read everything we could on Wikipedia, we read things on Reddit from mm -hmm. like people who work as coroners, you know, just like what, yeah. what their life is like. It's, it's pretty, it got pretty dark, but it really is like, I wouldn't say it's like, Scientifically accurate. Yeah, it's did, nowhere close but to scientifically accurate. But guys, it's a, disclaimer. Yeah, this <laughs> argument is not scientifically accurate. Can you believe okay, it? Good. Feature narrative film. Uh, uh, but but it's, a, but it's inspired by something that is real. It's, it's, it's a hyperbole yeah. of the truth. Yeah, exactly. Right? Like, like, and not only do they fart, but they also they talk too. Sometimes they they call it like a death rattle, right? Yeah. So like the air will just kind of leave their vocal cords and just vibrate in a way that sounds like they're saying things. They, they just, can and do get boners. They, yeah, sometimes like uh, coroners will deal with like really strange things they're not like then they can't go home and talk yeah. about rigor mortis and stuff like that will set in it's right. yeah dead bodies are really bizarre and I, I think the reason why we were drawn to the image of a farting corpse is because it's both uh, so dark and so sad because you know one day we're all gonna die and shit our pants. It, I think it's, it's the funniest thing and the saddest thing we could think of all in one image mm -hmm. and like it's literally gallows humor. It's yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, it yeah. really is. That's kind of what's great about this film is that it takes like what's so fundamental about and physical about the human experience and mm. also what is so emotional and kind of ethereal about the human experience and ties it all together. Uh, okay. You mentioned you mentioned boners mm. and you know. I'm never going to pass up an opportunity to talk about boners, especially not boners and movies at the same time. Yeah. So, <laughs> Manny's boner, which is rare. Like, it's not just movies. a boner. Like mm -hmm. it does things. It does things that I don't think any real human boner could do. I mean, it acts mm -hmm. as a compass. Mm -hmm. So, you guys knew you wanted to explore these very real elements of a human corpse. How did that parlay itself into? this boner is going to guide the way. Literally. It's yeah. going to lead them places. I, I think it's a really, really weird thing where once you throw all the ingredients on the table, there's like only one way to connect the dots. And when we had a dead body with superpowers that were sur for survival, like it just made sense that of all the things that could be the compass, it would be his dick. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, and like, it's true for a lot of men. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. We kind of we went through every single bodily function and every single body part and came up with powers, uh, and then we kept the ones that were like thematically and emotionally resonant. Mm -hmm. And so like a lot of things fell by the wayside because it was just like kind of random that like yeah. oh he has hair that just comes out like rope. We were like okay that's cool but like there's not there's nothing shameful or interesting in there. But then like. Wieners are emotionally charged. Like you're not supposed to talk about them. Like mm -hmm. there's so much shame and humor and in, in there. So like that was like from very early on one of the ones where like, well, of course there's going to be a boner superpower of some yeah. sort. What does the Swiss Army Man mean to you guys on a symbolic level? It's pretty obvious now looking back on it, but at the time when we were writing it, we had no idea that it was going to mean this. But like in the end, our two main characters, Hank and Manny. Uh, they both need each other to survive, and this becomes a really simple metaphor for how we are, we are all each other's survival tools. You know, Aww. I know, yeah. It's <laughs> That's really sweet, you guys. Yeah, yeah. I know. and then yeah. on the weird side, like the human body is a weird freak show of a thing that like we're just used to because we see it every day, and so like uh, by turning it into a Swiss Army knife of sorts, it was a fun way to like make fun of that. You yeah. just be like, how weird that like water squirts out of this. Yeah. Like when I'm sad. What? A, what? <laughs> is that? Or happy. Or yeah. happy. That's tears right. are really weird. Yeah. You could do a whole other movie just on tears. Yeah. <laughs> or you could do a whole movie on pregnancy. I have a friend who just had a baby, and like mm -hmm. just the way that the body oh, knows yeah. over nine months to do like this, and then this, and then one I've week done it later. Twice. And then, that's yeah. Mind blowing. One of the I think kind of pluses and minuses of doing a film that's so original and that breaks ground in many ways is that people are going to have very visceral and very dramatic reactions, positively and negatively. I have a quote <laughs> of one, no, one really positive critical response was Mark Olson from the LA Times. He said, 
He called this movie a work of wild imagination and furious creativity with a whimsical sense of invention and a lingering air of melancholy isolation, which I thought was a really nice description and accurate. Yeah. Another critic, who I won't mention, said it was as full of hot air as Manny's corpse. Nice. Yeah. So how do you guys deal with criticism? I am so sensitive. I don't know mm. how anyone deals with criticism when they put their art out into the world, but yeah. sp specifically with something so original and so daring. How do you take that good and that bad and manage it all? Um, well, it's hard. <laughs> it's been a roller coaster of a yeah. year, yeah. for sure. Um, I mean, one of the things we do is we couch our sincerity in jokes. I mean, uh, which like the movie sort of explores, mm -hmm. you know, like trying to like hide yourself uh, from the world. So what you're saying is things. we were cheap and we just created a shield. So yeah. we can't feel anything. So we can just be like, oh, I don't care. This, this movie's this comedy. I don't care that you hated it. <laughs> like, God, I, I mean, I get, I get sad. Like if I read negative reviews of something I love and it's not right. something I created. So yeah. I, I get I very, just... definitely get really uh, angry whenever I read a, a bad review for a movie I love. Did you yeah. write down who did write that one? I can find it for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> see, like, yeah. I was just, I was telling Dan this the other day that, like, a lot of the mean reviews have, like, really dumb fart jokes in there. You yeah. know, like, oh, like, it says full of hot air as Manny's corpse. That's why I chose that one, because I was like, really? There's quite a few of those. That's well, really lame. But no, he has permission. Yeah, can, I'm not yeah. going to shame him for shaming me. Right. We have, well, we, we basically, we put a, we put a kick me sign on the back of our, yeah. of our movie, basically. It's, it's well, such an easy target. Um, yeah. So it totally makes sense. That's kind of the point. Yeah. But I feel like That's to... Like, kick me, I dare you. You're going to prove the point of our film. Exactly. Which is about <laughs> how society shames like people. Like, he couldn't help but make a fart joke. Yeah. Like, he had yeah. to do it, which yeah. says something about our impulses and our desire to explore this material, right? right? Yeah. So in a way, he is kind of proving... He or she has a lot in common with Hank at the beginning of the film in yeah. that way, where it's like, you know, society can make us, like, really, like can just build up this all these associations around farts and just yeah. and teach us like this is shameful this is crazy don't talk about this I have little very small children and if any one of them breaks wind they all they laugh yeah. they just inherently find it funny <laughs> I didn't tell them it's funny yeah. right. they just laugh they're like yeah. ha ha yeah. I think that's a, a universal thing I don't know it's a setup and a punchline all in one <laughs> moment it's such a, it's the most like, it's like concise a pure joke. yeah it's very it pure is. It's very strange. It's a little story on so, one sound. Yeah. <laughs> one of the things that I think makes this film successful and it, that could have also easily led to its demise is the chemistry between uh, Hank and Manny, yeah. which mm -hmm. is Paul Dano and Dana Radcliffe, who were brilliant together. What was the casting process with those two guys, and when did you know when you saw them together, like, okay, we got this. This is going to actually work. <laughs> did you ever know that? Uh, we we found that out on the first day of shooting. Mm -hmm. uh, we or rehearsed. Rehearsing maybe. I don't know. Yeah. I, for me, it was the first day of shooting. Oh, okay. Rehearsal was fun-ish, but yeah. like you're still like, they they were kind of like marking their lines and kind of like working through it. And it was like, oh, they're they're both smart, but like I don't know. They also have different processes, like. so that yeah. was kind of a weird thing. Because like Paul doesn't like rehearsing, and Daniel loves rehearsing, and so during rehearsal, Paul would just be saying his lines like without any emotion, just kind of marking through it. Right. And, and Daniel then asking questions as he got to parts yeah. where he's like, that's going to trip me up tomorrow. What, exactly. what exactly is going on? Whereas there? Radcliffe would be there like teary eyed, just like really in it. And so yeah, we had no idea what the chemistry was going to be like, even during rehearsal, which was like you know two days before shooting. Um, and then once we got on set, it just kind of all fell into place in a really lovely way. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think I think when we were originally casting them, one of the big things we realized because we did the Sundance Labs, we 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 did some test shoots there, and we realized how important it was to get that chemistry right because mm -hmm. we we had two friends of ours who are amazing actors, really nice people, and we quickly just saw how difficult the roles were and how right. difficult they they were compared to each other. And if we didn't cast them right, it would just be kind of a miserable, you know, Because they shoot. literally have to hug each other, drag each other around, like put put their yeah. hands in each other's mouths. Like, yeah. Like it's it's not just a scene partner. It's like a, like you're, you're like collaborating on the same role. Like you're like holding It's one, yeah, day. you're one organism. And so, and so one of the first things we asked Paul after we reached out to him was, uh, Who do you want to work with? Who do you want to, like who's someone you would love to spend, you know, five weeks in the woods with and just like who you think would be down for this kind of role because that was that was something we realized early on would just be uh, you know would make or break the shoot yeah and he gave us like a couple names and it was like he was like oh I loved working with Spike Jones on where the wild things are and we would wrestle <laughs> and we were like nope Spike Jones <laughs> yeah. is not coming to our set that will just like make us so upset to have our favorite director like getting direction from us uh, so we vetoed that and then he said Dan Radcliffe and we were like holy shit like 
That okay. could be interesting, uh, yeah. Our financiers would love that, and we're <laughs> big fans. Well, I'm looking forward to Swiss Army Woman, which I'm assuming is gonna come out sometime in 2018 or 2019. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the cinematic universe is gonna have Swiss mm -hmm. Army Woman, and then also... Uh, a dog, maybe. Swiss yeah. Army dog. Yeah, yeah there's gonna be uh, Swiss Army Man 2, Big Manny in japan -y, where oh, Manny amazing. shows up in Japan and meets a bunch of schoolgirls and fights big kaiju type things. Amazing, yeah. can you do like some Harajuku, like get dressed in oh, the yeah, full costume sure. and stuff? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, you heard it here first. Swiss Army Woman and the Swiss Army Extended Universe is coming soon right. to a multiplex near you. Where can people find you if they want to tell you how great you are on social media? <laughs> uh, well, my address is uh, 1360. No. <laughs> <laughs> just come by. Yeah. Just coffee. say, say hi. Uh, Knock on the door. No, we have a Twitter called Dan it's Daniels. It's at, just at Daniels. Daniels. Well, sick. I'm at Miri the Jedi because oh. my last name tells you that I am a Jedi, so I figured I'd just make it easier for everybody. Yeah, so at Mary the dope. Jedi. Uh, let us know your thoughts on Swiss Army Man. You can reach out to these guys and tell them what you want to see in the cinematic universe of Swiss Army Man. <laughs> and keep coming back to hitfix.com for more Fandemonium and more Daniels. Thank you, thank, thank you. Thank you, bye, bye, bye. <laughs> <laughs>